right guys, today I'm going to show you how to make guilt-free cookies because, you know, it's coming up on uh, Christmas and those cookies are going to be talking to you. So I'm going to show you how to make ones that are not only nutritious and delicious, but they're also loaded with fiber. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need a few things. You're going to need three ripe bananas, you know, the ones that look like they're turning into a leopard. Uh, you're going to need a third of a cup of applesauce. I recommend homemade if you've got it. If not, get something with a little bit of texture to it. You're going to need two cups of oats as an oatmeal. You're going to need a, th a quarter cup of honey. You're going to need some raisins, which I've got back here. And I actually like to soak my raisins in a little bit of wine. You're going to need a dash of vanilla, in this case about a teaspoon, and you're going to need a teaspoon of cinnamon. So what we're going to do first is we're going to peel and mash these bad boys. Bananas in there, so let's get a mashing. If you don't have one of these potato mashers, you can always use a fork. It just does it a little bit nicer if you do it with a masher. It makes life a little simpler. Once that's in there, I'm going to add my applesauce, in which case this is a third of a cup of applesauce. I'm going to kind of incorporate that in with the bananas. Okay. I'm going to also Add about a half a cup of raisins, which I happen to have here. And like I said, mine's been soaked in some wine. The trick is just to keep mixing and adding as we go along. So we'll add our almond milk. Okay, we're going to add our half teaspoon of, or rather a teaspoon of vanilla. We're going to add our teaspoon Of cinnamon and again you know this is not written in bronze you can adjust things as you like them and I'm going to put in about a quarter cup of honey and again the way I do it it's kind of like less is more and then last but not least I'm going to mash it up a little bit more and then I'm going to add my oats and then I'm going to shift over to using a fork to make it good I just want to make sure I get all this stuff mixed up well incorporated. I'm going to add the oats and one of the other nice things about this recipe is that you can also add some extra fiber. I happen to have a bag of microfiber over here and uh, I'm going to add a couple of scoops of that to it. You know again no reason these things can't be healthy as well as tasty. There we go. And then I'm going to take my fork and I'm just going to start mixing. Because now what you want to do is this thing's going to get kind of chunky and lumpy and then we're going to proceed to put them on our cookie sheet. Now, right now while I'm mixing this up, I've got my uh, oven preheating to 350 degrees. So if you like oatmeal cookies, and who doesn't, right? You ought to really like these. And again, if you want to add a little bit of extra, which I'm going to do here, a little more cinnamon, be my guest. If you don't think there's enough raisins in there, Add some more. That's the beauty of this type of cooking. You know, I just kind of give you a guideline, but make it any way that you'd like. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my cookie sheet, and we'll start laying these bad boys out. So stand by. All right, now I'm going to grab me a big old tablespoon, and I'm just going to start laying this out. Now, again, what's nice about the oatmeal is after it sits here a little bit, it starts to thicken a bit. Okay, and I just usually take this little tablespoon. And again, you can make them as big or small as you want. If you make them smaller, then you end up getting more cookies. And like I said, these will be nice and chewy and golden brown when they're done. So I usually just use like a heaping tablespoon. Lay them out. There you go. So I ended up, this batch ended up making 13. Baker's dozen. All right. And then all we have to do is take them from there and pop it into Mr. Oven. Now I'm going to leave those in there for, oh, I'd say 20 minutes. Moment of truth time, gang. 
There you have it. I'm going to cool for about 15 minutes and now I'm going to plate them. And of course, the most interesting part of the entire procedure, the taste test. Still warm out of the oven. Oh my god.